Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to It Hurt Itself in Confusion, No Distribute Scanners, and Stealthy Malware. I'm Liv Rowley and I'm a Threat Intelligence Analyst at Blue Live. I'm Mathieu Gauchelaire and I'm a Security Analyst at Blue Live. So let's uh, jump right into this, right? What are No Distribute Scanners? No Distribute Scanners, uh, we're going to be referring to them often as NDSs in this presentation. They're also sometimes known as counter, counter AV, counter antivirus. Um, they're always, as far as we've identified, uh, standalone websites. So they're websites that are purely dedicated to this NDS functionality. Uh, what they allow people to do is to take files, upload them to uh, this NDS site, and then have that file scanned against dozens of different antivirus products. After that scan has been conducted, uh, the NDS generates a report that tells you whether and how uh, your file was detected by these different AVs. And the real key here is the no distribute part. So it is not going to share uh, any of the malware information. So no hashes are being shared, no samples are being shared, uh, nothing like that. That's really a critical element of this for cyber criminals. It allows them to keep their malware as for, uh, keep it stealthy for as long as possible while it's in development. And uh, these are pretty explicitly uh, criminal tools. They're marketed towards cyber criminals specifically for um, use in malware development and campaigns. Here's uh, an example of, of an NDS. Um, this is like a relatively simple one. And you can see you can just uh, drop a file right there in the center and have it scanned against many different products. And it's interesting to note here that we have some ads uh, across the bottom. So not all uh, UIs are as simplistic as the one we saw before. Here, for example, you have uh, way more granularity over your analysis. If you know, if you have a specific target in mind, you know that target is using uh, a specific AV product, you can match your sample against a specific AV product. You can also um, change, tweak some little things to make the simulation, to make the test as close as what your malware is going to encounter in the wild. You can also, uh, for example, disable or enable the UAC. This way, if you didn't develop that part for your malware, you can uh, very easily act as if you already did it. You have also this panel, uh, this one is from digchat.com. The interesting thing with this one is that you can actually choose uh, the internet access. You can configure it pretty easily. You can either choose to block it entirely, which is the case with most dynamic scanners out there, or you can also choose to have it whitelisted instead of full. If you choose a full internet connection, your sample might be distributed, and that's the case with most dynamic scanners. The whitelist, however, allows you to uh, have internet access with a handful of hosts, meaning you can actually train and have your sample, contact your C2, and this is really going to get you closer to the kind of uh, circumstances your malware is going to encounter in the wild. So let's take a little tour of the different NDS services we identified. But first, a little reminder, what is static analysis? What is a dynamic analysis? Uh, the static analysis is, to put it simply, everything you can do on a file without running it. So uh, it includes, for example, string detection, which you have an example right here, so you are a rule. You have also format analysis. Is it uh, portable executable? Uh, are the headers formally correctly formatted? Uh, is it signed? If yes, by who? Uh, is the entropy can high or not, which could indicate it is a packed sample, anything. Everything, unless you have to run the file. Dynamic analysis, on the other hand, is uh, you have to run the file in a secure environment and monitor its action. For example, I throw a sample in a VM and I see that it's encrypting all of my files. It is probably a malware. So this is the two difference. Static analysis, you don't run the file. Dynamic analysis, you have to run the file. So just so you can see uh, what that difference looks like from an NDS perspective, we're going to look at some examples of static and dynamic scans here. So this is a static scan for an information stealing malware called BOR. 
Uh, this is from February of 2020, and this uh, report was actually shared by the person selling Bohr malware in an effort to kind of uh, make it look better and market it. So uh, this is, again, a static scan on DINCheck, and we can see that Bohr was only detected by one out of 31 AV products at that time. And here's a close-up so you can see uh, the signature that was triggered. And here's the dynamic scan result for the same sample. Here is detected by three out of 23 different products. Uh, this report that we're showing here is, is truncated so we could fit as much as possible. Uh, and here's a, a close-up as to what uh, that detection looked like. So for this research, uh, we identified eight different NDS services. Uh, NDSs, it's pretty common for some of them to go up or go down or change their names, stuff like that. But these eight have been fairly stable. Of these eight, uh, all of them offered static scans and two of them offered dynamic scans as well. And also all of them offered API access. So uh, what does this look like, right? Again, these are e-crime tools. Uh, what, what is the pricing involved here? So we identified three different pricing models that we, we see these different NDSs using. The first one is free. Some of them are just completely free models uh, and it, you, anyone can go onto them and upload a file. These are typically relying on other NDSs for, for the back end um, and they appear to be supported by paid advertising. So we were looking at that before in one of the earlier samples. So it's ads for stuff like cryptos or led to zero days, stuff like that. Then we also have uh, what we're calling single and bundle scan pricing. So this is just a bunch of scans that you can buy at a set price. So maybe you want 10 static scans, here you go. Maybe you want uh, 25 dynamic scans, here you go. Um, and then lastly, there are uh, subscri subscription-based models. So uh, these can be daily, weekly, monthly type things, uh, offering access to different um, different functionality or a certain you know, number of scans that you can conduct in an hour. And we see a really big range of pricing on that depending on what's included. So for dincheck.com, that ranged from 50 to up to nearly $300 a month. Uh, just to kind of highlight how these plans look, um, here are some examples again from Dincheck of what their pricing looks like. And one thing we wanted to highlight here is the price of conducting one scan. So this is a DINCHEC's uh, runtime scan pricing. Runtime is what analysts typically are calling dynamic. Um, and so here to check against all of DINCHEC's uh, 23 AV products for dynamic scans, it costs about $3. And here are uh, similar plans, but for uh, static scans, or they call them scan time checks here. And you can see to do a similar scan against all of uh, DINCHEC's AVs, it's only 32 cents. So a pretty big price differential there. So how come there is such a big price difference? How come there is so few dynamic scanners compared to the static ones? We have the beginning of an answer here with this mock-up of what we think is the architecture of static scanners and dynamic scanners. Keep in mind, this is uh, an intuition based on what we know, not a formal thing that we are sure 100%. So, how do we think a static scanner works? Well, it's pretty straightforward architecture. You have your backend server with a, a program we're going to call MDS controller, simply going to get the sample from the front end and then store it somewhere and orchestrate really with all different components. You have calling the AV software to analyze the sample, run a test, and then get the results from the AV, return the results from the front end. This is pretty easy to put into place. You just have to create the NDS controller. Uh, you just uh, you can scale it pretty easily. If you want to have 25 AV install the same backend server, you can. If you want to split uh, all of this infrastructure against on several um, servers, you can as well. It's not a big problem. If we take a look at what we think is the dynamic scanners, architecture, things get a little bit more complicated because you run instantly into some problems. Remember, dynamic scanners, you actually dynamic analysis, you actually have to execute the file. But you cannot execute the file directly in your backend server that would infect it directly with malware. So you have to run it in a secure environment, for example, a virtual machine. 
The problem is that you cannot have one virtual machine and 25 AV software installed on the same virtual machine because each uh, antivirus would contaminate the result of the other. So if you want to test your sample against 25 antiviruses, you need 25 VM. That gets pretty heavy uh, on the computer side. Another problem is that you need um, a mechanism to revert to a state of the virtual machine that is sane. You cannot execute uh, a sample and then execute another one because the analysis of the second one would be contaminated by the first one once again. So you need to revert to a previous state after each analysis. And last but not least of the problem, you have to actually update your AV software pretty uh, regularly. And when I say regularly, I mean daily, because this is the, the whole point of what it is about, right? To have uh, a leg up on the AV software. So you have to have a mechanism to have 25, maybe, or 30 um, new snapshots updated every day. And also the computing power to run all of these uh, virtual machines. All of this makes it a pretty difficult system to scale up and pretty difficult system to put into place. So this is why, at least a big part of the answer, why they are so expensive and why there are so few dynamic scanners. So now let's take a role of let's take a sorry a look at the role of NDSs in cybercrime. First of all, you have your pretty straightforward utilization, right? You test your malware, then you analyze the output. Is it detected? No. Nope. Well, wonderful. You can unleash it into the world and use it as much as you want. If it is detected, however, you have to go back to your drawing board, identify the cause of detection, remedy it, and then test it again. Of course, this should be noted that because most of these analyses, even the dynamic ones, are not made with internet, you don't have the cloud support that a lot of AV products have, meaning that it won't be exactly like in the real world. However, it's still pretty interesting to match your malware against. Another thing is that this uh, simple but efficient cycle is used both by big shots, uh, big time criminal gangs, and also small fries. So, so here we have some examples of a, another use for NDSs. So we mentioned how they generate a report at the end of it. Um, uh, crimeware authors, especially malware authors, will often use those reports to kind of market uh, their malware. So here we have examples of different information stealers uh, and reports that have been shared related to them over the past year. And uh, yeah, so oftentimes they'll be shared and they'll try to highlight uh, how, you know, how few detections uh, their, their malware is getting. Another interesting use is um, NDS is integrated into crimeware products. So because of, uh, we mentioned earlier that the, all of the NDSs that we looked at have APIs and this allows for some uh, degree of automation. So here we have, uh, this tool is a cryptor, uh, it's called CyberSeal and uh, it, CyberSeal allows users to uh, have their uh, cryptid file tested against an NDS service to see uh, once again whether and how this malware is being detected. Another use of NDSs after you actually programmed your malware, after you sold it on the underground is uh, when you're using it. And you have two key features to take advantage of. First one is periodic scans meaning you're going to have your sample tested every Friday, let's say, and every Friday your NDS is going to send you an email saying, oh, great, no detection, or maybe it was detected by Simon Tech. Then what you have to do is churn out a new version that is not detected by Simon Tech, and you can continue to have this, uh, this leg up on AV softwares not to be detected. Another one is uh, domain checks. It is very straightforward, it is matching uh, the host that your malwares are probably going to contact against uh, the blacklist that AV software have. It would be um, kind of too bad to unleash several samples onto the world and have them all contact a C2 that is already blacklisted. So to avoid that, you can use the domain check functionality of uh, NDSs. Last but not least, 
NDSs are sometimes being used by other NDSs as their backend. So this is a screenshot from dincheck.com, I believe. And uh, as, we saw, as, we, as we have seen, it is pretty difficult to uh, have a full-fledged backend for an NDS, especially a dynamic scanner. So Dincheck is offering uh, two people that need it to act as a backend. Let's take a look at the key point now, what you should remember from this uh, presentation. So first of all, it's important to see and to take into account that threat actors are using our tools against us to keep a leg up. Another thing that we wanted to do was really highlight the role that NDSs are playing within the world of cybercrime. Um, they're kind of a niche thing within the underground, but uh, lots of people are using them, as Mathieu noted before, both uh, big gangs and you know smaller cyber criminals. So this is something for us as researchers to keep an eye on and make sure we're monitoring. And this could be an interesting place for law enforcement to look as a uh, choke point in an underground uh, operation. Another uh, interesting thing that we get here is uh, cyber criminals are sharing scan results with us. They're advertising their malware, saying how often it was detected. Um, and so this can help us as uh, researchers and as defenders to better understand what are the new malware families out there and uh, which ones are the most potent to, to keep our eyes on. So with that in mind, uh, we're ready to take some questions now. Thank you.